podcast number 54. If you take a look at this right here, you could either do the quadratic formula or if it's factorable, that would be a little bit faster. Let me try and see if I can factor it. So in order to get a two sine squared, I would need two sine of two theta times another sine of two theta. And in order to get a one, that would be one times one. And one of them needs to be positive and one of them needs to be negative. So I'm gonna guess that it goes positive and then negative. Let's see if that works for the middle term. This would be one sine of two theta, and then this would be minus two sine of two theta, which would leave behind negative sine of two theta. So it worked. Then, set this one equal to zero. So two sine of two theta plus one equals zero. Or the other possibility is set this one equal to zero. Okay, so for this one, just add one to both sides. And that's basically saying, when does sine equal one? So the sine graph looks like this. It equals one right here. Well, right here would be two pi. In the middle is pi, and so this would be pi over two. But because it has this two right here, there's gonna be twice as many answers as usual, so look at another cycle of sine, and it's gonna equal one right here. Right here is two pi, so this is to the right of it. So this one is going to be two pi plus pi over two from this pi over two right here. So this would be four pi over two plus one more. That's five pi over two. Now, with the two theta, that means two theta equals this and two theta equals that. So two theta equals pi over two. Two theta equals five pi over two. And then, divide each one by two. So when you divide this by a two, it's gonna become pi over four. And the next one will be five pi over four. Okay, we're done with that part of it. And then for this one, subtract one from both sides. And then divide both sides by two. So when does sine equal negative one half? Here's the sine graph. Negative one half would be right here. And if you go across, there's gonna be two solutions, one that is to the right of pi, and one that is to the left of two pi. Now, where is it? So the next thing is use the calculator and find sine inverse of negative one half. So sine inverse of negative one half is equal to, so that is negative pi over six, negative pi over six. So that means that the calculator actually went this way and it found this solution at negative pi over six. So that just means that the gap between our solution right here and pi right here is a gap of pi over six. So that means that this one is actually at pi plus pi over six. When you get a common denominator, that would be six pi over six plus one more is seven pi over six. And for this solution, so this one is to the left of two pi, so that would be two pi minus pi over six. 
and then this would be 12 pi over 6 minus 1 is 11 pi over 6. Now because of the 2 theta, there would actually be two more solutions if you follow the graph out and continue this line. Or what you could do is take these two solutions, so take these two solutions, and if you add 2 pi, you'll get to these two solutions. So next it's going to be, you know what, on this I forgot to write the 2 theta. So next it's going to be, take 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi, take 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. So if you get a common denominator, this you have to multiply by 6, so that's 12 pi over 6 plus 7. 12 plus 7 is 19 pi over 6. And for this one, that would be 12 pi over 6 plus 11 is 23 pi over 6. And then the last thing to do is divide by 2. So divide by 2 on each side. And that means that the denominator is now going to become a 12. So we have 7 pi over 12. This would be 11 pi over 12. This one would become 19 pi over 12. And this one would become 23 pi over 12. So in total, there's 4 five, six solutions.